Good afternoon. This is Akshay Sharma in a Motivity Executive C-Level interview series at the Linux Foundation's Open Networking and Edge Summit. And today we welcome a partner in Brooke Frischmeyer, a seasoned telecom executive with over 25 years of experience as an executive and senior engineer at Cisco Systems, NetNumber, AT&T Bell Labs, and many other places. Currently, Brooke is Senior Director of Product Management, 5G and Edge at Robin.io a solution provider for 5G edge computing solutions using the Motivity Alliance partners as best of breed solutions vendors. Welcome, Brooke. Great hey. to virtually meet you again. Thanks for having me. Uh, great to see you again as well. Great, Brooke. From your decades of experience, what is the main value proposition of the Motivity Alliance that it provides? Um, good question. So as we move to the first slide there, you know, we're bringing together a lot of industry leaders, leading edge and incumbents that have actually done this before. We've got Covair, Robin, Color Tokens, Allot. We have Privify, Blue Arcus, Agnity, QCT, ABB, Prodapt, Zatiki, CloudSpot, and Gruber. So what we have the capability to do here, and if you want to go to the next slide, we have the ability to bring a whole solution from bare metal to services, to administration, to operation. So let's go back one slide, please. And then what we can do is uh, we can take this and we can put together a completely pre-integrated solution, pre-validated, and we can deliver that to you directly. Um, previous slide, please. What we can then do is, uh, since it comes pre-integrated, we can integrate all of your life cycles and we can reduce the complexity over a number of fronts that we have moving forward. It's not just about installation, it's about how we reduce life cycle management across all of the activities. How do we do it in a way that is either one click or completely automated? When we look at the different services they wanna bring, you know, a lot of them are edge in nature, mech in nature and certainly have mobility in nature, whether it's uh, 4G, 5G based services, whether they are industrial applications, whether we're looking at logistics and transportation, but it generally it's smart X everywhere. Um, whether it's a smart city, whether it's smart medicine, whether it's smart agriculture. And we, one of the th things that we also bring together here is there's a, a number of way to skin this cat and something that uh, a lot of different alliances or companies don't look at is there's a lot of multi-tenancy in nature because you're going to have a lot of flexibility in terms of actually how you deploy. Um, even if you just deploy this on your own, you know, you might have something that is a particular cost center. And as uh, Akshay will talk about later today, how do you turn that into a value center? Now with that, you have to make sure that even in your own teams, you have roles-based access, you have a way to perform granular chargeback, even if it is a free service, you wanna understand what the usage is. Um, you have to have tenant observability, and we really need to build towards a MEC framework as a lot of this is driving some of these next gen applications. You know, and a big one for me is observability. You know, observability, when you're just looking at yourself is pretty simple because you own anything. There's nothing to hide a partition. But when we take a look at a multi-tenant visibility type of situation, it becomes much more complex because you don't know who's looking at what, and you certainly need to keep things separate. So if you don't have the right solution in place, what that means is you've got to take a number of different data services from bare metal to services. You have to find a way to get all that data back somewhere, then you need some massive AI to correlate it. Right? And usually that isn't too bad, but when you throw in the wrinkle of multi-tenancy in, and the fact that there's a lot of privacy involved in many countries, you need to be able to do that in a way that A, gives them a complete view of everything they're doing, all of the implications and intricacies and how the resources are being used up and down the stack, but you need to do it in a private way. We need to do it in an automated way. And at the end of the day, we need to provide these solutions that reduce multiple time to outcomes from integration to deployment to operation. And we want to serve it up in a way that is absolutely just in time or pay as you grow. 
Right. So it's not only a highly advanced microservice architecture, but we can even get down to the micropayments. So you're paying as you use, as you expand, as you actually see revenue. Thank you. Thanks, Brooke. Now, what about you know end-to-end -end solutions and how does that get integrated within the life cycle and the workflows? Yeah, there's a lot of lessons we learn. And the reason why we're starting off with this picture is um, there's a lot to it. I mean, a lot of times, and, uh, and I'm guilty of this as an NF vendor back in the day, it's you talk about all these things and then someone says, well, you know, then you can automate it, saves your operational costs. But there's a lot to that. You need a very his holistic approach that really looks at the end-to-end -end solution and also looks up and down the different domains. And, you know, we have a number of services that the Motivity is considering here, some of these. And, you know, it starts off with bare metal. Bare metal. How do you provision and discover that bare metal, right? Because I don't have a service if my bare metal isn't up to snuff. You know, and by the way, I've also have to uh, condition my bare metal. I have to bring up some kind of cloud platform cluster. I have to make sure that that's running. Um, then I have to bring up some network functions as we see in the blue boxes there. And then on top of that, I have to hook them together as a service. And by the way, I need to one click that in, into existence. You know, and we're still not done. You know, we need to link these with other methods, methods of procedures to other parts of a pipeline. We also need to incorporate them back into physical devices like routers or even pagers for alerts. So what we need to do, you know, is not just build you a solution that puts this all together, but makes it easy to operate for you. Again, it's not just about delivering a solution in a box, calling it done. It's how do we make your life as Motivity easier in the future? And what we need to do is we need to take a look at the different workflows that I've just explained up and down the stack from bare metal to services, and we automate it. Not just automate it in silos, but again, single quick workflows that says, all right, if I want to build this particular service, I need these network functions. I need this kind of uh, redundant cloud platform. I need this bare metal configuration. I need this networking, right? And I shouldn't have to ask for each one of those things in individual steps. I just have context aware workflows, whether it's instantiate, start, stop, migrate, heal, clone, scale, and they should be able to be one clicked or automatically driven by a policy engine. So what we can do uh, with some of the Robin platforms and with the rest of the partners in Motivity is give you that holistic ease of use because we have integrated everything as a package. So instead of doing tons and tons of steps, it's completely automated and or it's one click if you want that type of control. Next slide, please. Great, thanks, Brooke. Um, Any uh, uh, summary of lessons learned? Yes, um, good question. So, you know, things that, We've learned as Robin and a lot of this uh, we, we share with Motivity because we have actually done deployments with some of the Motivity partners before we actually join. Um, some of them are a little more obvious, but you know, the first one is, you know, just don't wait, right? If you really want to be the leader and you want to get the revenue and you know transform how you do your business, um, it's doable today. We do it in Motivity, and everybody in Motivity has uh, you know put together these type of services. So don't wait. Uh, remember, it's, it's all connected, and we'll talk about that a little bit more as I, as I go down, but it's not just about getting an application running or a service. It's not just about billing. It's not just about pipeline. It's not just about metal. You know, this is an end-to-end -end solution, and it needs to act like an end-to-end -end solution. It shouldn't take you 20 steps to do things. It should only maybe take you one step for a life cycle, something you need to do life cycle. It needs to be automated. And then one of the things that we... Uh, you know, bring to bear that, you know, everybody is an integrator. It doesn't mean you get rid of your integration team or you get rid of your favorite SI, you know, but, you know, as we built this alliance and as we've worked throughout uh, many different industries, uh, more and more with these type of uh, containerized or virtualized solution, everybody has a role and everybody has to step up to the plate. And if you're working with partners that aren't deeply involved in your integration, they're probably the wrong partners. Next, uh, you use, need to use technologies that make you not have to uh, be beholden to any other vendor timelines. You know, we will create a service for you. We'll drop it into a network. We'll help 
install this and uh, teach people how to operate it, but we realize it's not the only part of that solution. Or if we're building you something to do uh, a hosting platform for a number of services. You know, we need to make sure that we harmonize your virtual machines and containers. We need to do it in a way that doesn't create additional operation silos or resource silos, right? You shouldn't have to have two stacks that are running next to each other in two racks. They should really be able to share, reuse, and when necessarily isolate those resource pools. And, you know, they absolutely positively need to not create operational silos. You know, one of the things that I see that people do is they're so worried with getting something off the ground that they don't necessarily look at how it's going to work down the line. How is all the operations going to really work? Um, you know, a big, big one out to there to any potential customers is don't just ask what it does. It's really important to understand how it does and why it improves your life. You know, for instance, one of the things uh, my pet peeves is always NUMA. Um, everybody says they're NUMA aware, but nobody really wants to explain it. And when you, and when you look at it, um, people don't really deal with all of the NUMA pieces. They can't properly do affinity, anti-affinity sometimes. Um, they don't necessarily, if you look at just some certain standards, you know, maybe I have granularity down to the worker node, um, which is a logical construct where we run containers or multiple containers in many cases. You know, I want to see visibility down to every NUMA node in every server, in every cluster, in every cloud, and I want to be able to utilize it that way, which is extremely important at the edge where resources are more constrained. Um, so there cannot be any hard coding. If you're hard coding CPUs or virtual function IDs or any of this stuff, um, you're stuck and you can't automate. Um, and you, you know, so you're going to need something that allows you to model and ask for things that I'll talk about here in a second. As I mentioned a little earlier, don't just for focus on getting things off the ground like a 5G RAN, focus on how that interoperates with the services that run on it. How do we manage life cycles, not just across the RAN, but also uh, across the applications like a MEC application. Make sure that we're not just consolidating applications, but we're consolidating operational silos. Other, every, every time you wanna do something or make a change, if you don't, it will be a lot harder. We need to make sure we not just consolidate those operational silos, but you know, even workflows. If it takes me 50 different workloads to do something, workflows, then I probably have the wrong workflow engine. As we said before, plan for multi-tenancy. Um, you need to have very granular roles, you need to be able to have chargeback. And as I mentioned before, observability is a key piece. Last but not least, no rocket science. And by I mean rocket science, if you're hard coding, you probably have too many rocket sciences. An example I like to use a Kubernetes platform. You should not have to be a Kubernetes platform as a user of a Motivity product to operate it, right? Sure, you should probably understand how your application or your service works, but you shouldn't have to be a genius required to figure out how to map, map that to the platform. You should be worried about the number of instances you want and where. Um, you want to be considering like many, how many CPUs or how much memory I need. Not I need these specific ones over there, just that I have some sort of need, some court of uh, declarative requirement. Right? Maybe I need another application to run before I can bring up the service. So it has to be pre-installed like a database or a... Uh, data pipeline. Then you should hit the go button. No hard coding. The operation solution you get should say, yeah, here's what you want and we'll go find it. We'll find the resources for you. We'll do all the hard configuration for you. You don't have to hard code. You don't have to hunt for things. It needs to be simple. No rocket scientists. Thank you. Next question. Great, Brooke. Any, any uh, last uh, comments about what you see from Motivity? Uh, yeah, so the, the, the plan is, you know, we, we need to deliver, and the industry needs for literally everything, unprecedented ease of, ease of use. Um, while automation and next-gen services are great, the expertise for everybody is not always there. We need to find a way to get these solutions to you and make them easy to operate, not just easy to install easy to bring up. We need a wide uh, array of so solutions options. Um, a lot of them center around mobility. 
And uh, we need to, you know, have the kind of solution that allows you to do these next gen things that'll set your business apart. We need to be able to start with small lean platforms, lean solutions and grow them to massive scale. And again, those are the type of things we need to think about before we deploy that first small one. We need to build them from the ground up. They need to be highly performant so they have a long life cycle on their hardware. They have to have a lot of operation and solutions flexibility because when you look at all these great new applications, your requirements will not be the same you know, even a year from now. So we have to do something in a way that makes it easy for you to rapidly iterate. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, when we talk about integration op operations, all of your times, we have to reduce those time to outcomes uh, to be truly valuable to our customers. Thank you. Great, now thanks. I'd like, to, I'd like to turn the tables and uh, interview you, my friend. <laughs> all right. Looking forward to it, thanks. All right, I'll be gentle. Um, so, you know, you have decades of experience, you know, what are some of the key benefits of uh, Covar, Covar's VSMP and VSD, VSDP? You know, they talk about the value stream management delivery um, for 5G smart city, smart X enablement. Please. Thanks for the question, Brooke. So as we know, you know, this is a journey, so it's not a destination. And one of the key uh, Motivity Alliance partners, Colbert, uh, is uniquely positioned with its PPM solution. Uh, it's a product and portfolio management solution for project management. And um, it's a solution set that allows you to basically project manage things end to end. Uh, so all the stakeholders have a unified platform to manage budgets, schedules, resources, uh, field data with a single interface, including revenue management. At the end of the day, well, this is all about, you know, hopefully creating a value to either the city in a smart city deployment or a smart campus uh, deployment or a smart grid uh, deployment. And, you know, revenue management is a key component in here. So now in this particular uh, situation, what we have is uh, you could have an IT team, let's say for a smart city, develop its internal software as a product using Covert DevOps or ALM application lifecycle management solutions, manage the delivery of it through Covair's CICD capabilities along with Robin.io and other partners, bring these functions to the edge. So this is where 5G edge computing comes in and they could ideate, you know, these could be Kubernetes um, containerized solutions. You ideate, you make it open APIs. You then um, maybe put an enterprise service bus to it with policy controls. I noticed, uh, uh, Brooke, you had uh, RBAC, R-B-A-C, role-based access control. Well, how do you enforce all of that? How do you define the roles? You know, should the IT manager be able to see everything or maybe just the IT parts? Maybe, you know, different functions uh, are allocated for different uh, uh, applications. So let's say HR can look at HR-related software packages. Logistics people look at things like SAP and things like that. Uh, revenue folks uh, talk or, or the finance folks look at the uh, revenue management components. So all of these need to be orchestrated and coordinated in an industrial type setting. And that's where Colbert brings that to the, uh, to the equation. And in doing so, this can help transition the smart grid, smart campus or smart cities IT department from a cost center to a value center. Excellent. Okay. Let me ask you another question. So when it comes to software teams, how do they embark on this journey um, transitioning? Good question, uh, Brooke. As enterprises move their siloed IT with internally facing product solutions towards the cloud, uh, they must open their platforms to make it as a service. IT teams first, first should form an API team and develop best practices, which include the creation of an API product manager, an API architect, uh, ideally with the goals of turning IT from a cost center to a value center. An example is, uh, Brooke and your former uh, company at Cisco Systems, they turned their internally fo uh, focused IT functions and their existing products like unified communications and VOIP products like PBXs and session border controllers to become virtualized as a service in WebEx. 
And uh, ironically, we're using Zoom here. A lot of the Zoom folks actually originated at Cisco WebEx. Now, here's an example of turning an internal product into an external product as a service. Now, while these functions can be decentralized, it would make sense to have cross-functional matrix reporting within distributed teams to ensure the correct APIs, the correct tools, the correct enterprise service bus solutions, and common analytics and dashboards are leveraged. And ideally with revenue management, you have to have a framework for that too. Otherwise we end up with disparate siloed solutions again. Once the API team is formed and the internal software solutions are made into cloud-based products provided as a service, an external API should be developed, whether it's B2B, uh, business to business, or B2C, business to consumer. And this API must be made secure, process compliant, with the correct dashboards, with the correct role-based policy controls to ensure the correct usage is occurring, with ideally disaster recovery as a service built in. All of which Cover and its partners uh, provide, like Robin.io and, and, and the uh, whole ecosystem of partners we have. An API is, as we know, is an application program interface that allows for easier integration to tools and applications. Here, an application can invoke the third-party application, allowing for better, more holistic, integrated solutions to occur. This can extend the life of existing applications, can allow for increased productivity in reusing existing modules, allow for newer mashups of hyper-converged solutions and services to occur, perhaps with better workflow decisions being automated perhaps with better metrics and dashboards. While an enterprise service bus solution from vendors like Cobear with its Omnibus allow for pre-built, pre-tested integrations to third-party systems to occur without having the need for knowing individual tool APIs. This leads to more seamless integrations, increased productivity and better operational efficiencies. Now, in the case of Cobear's Omnibus, it is pre-integrated with 120 applications like SAP, Salesforce, Microsoft Dynamics, Cisco App Dynamics, as well as many other applications. And so in this case, what you can do is you can have additional benefits like process controls with dashboards and metrics, including revenue management, and then security with resiliency built in. All this should enable a better collaborative environment for better quality, better productivity, better security, and support for better operational resiliency. Fantastic. So let me ask you a question. What are the implications to business leaders for uh, Cover's VSMP, VSDP announcement recently with Kubernetes? So VSMP is one of the hottest topics right now. Uh, you know, as, as we see, enterprises are transforming with digital transformation, moving to the cloud, looking at industrial IoT, looking at newer solutions like AI, ML, e-kiosks, mobile applications, e-commerce, but all this will fall flat if monetization and revenue management is neglected. This key, criti key critical capability needs to be addressed as they look to transition their IT from a cost center to a value center within newer business models. Smart city, smart campus, and smart grid enterprises can charge their customers using their APIs in different ways, charge per transaction, charge by a subscription model, charge API access to their platform as an upsell, charge based on revenues generated in rev share approaches, or perhaps not charge at all, but collect analytics proving increased sales of other products or decreased costs from operational efficiencies gained. Cobert can provide the dashboards to help manage the revenue management and payment processing in this journey. Uh, Cobert's PPM solution delivers greater value to the organization by connecting the entire life cycle from planning to execution. It enables IT leaders to optimize their project portfolios, manage the capacity of resources against the demands raised from different projects, and connects plans and resources to the actual project execution. The Cover PPM solution within its VSMP solution set not only provides complete visibility across the value stream, but also provides complete visibility of the delivery life cycle from the quadruple perspectives of revenues, resource, time and cost to the C-level executives, as well as to the stakeholders of the project through role-based real-time reports and dashboards. All right, 
Before we uh, tie it off here, I'm going to make a few comments and then I'll turn it back over to you. Uh, you know, so what we've talked about today is how motivity brings everything together across a wide array of solutions. And, you know, when I look at how, you know, what Akshay has talked about and, um, you know, what I've talked about at Robin, it's really about how do you make automation work the way you always thought it would? All right, how do you make things easy? How do you make operations smoother? How do you truly, you know, integrate this into your development and your operations? And, uh, you know, that's part of the overall solution is that, you know, the Mutivity Alliance has looked at this beyond, this is my application. And we've looked about how do you make it real? How do you reduce timelines? And how do you make it easy and work the way that you really thought it was supposed to work in the first place, but never got before? And then with that, I'll turn it over to Akshay. You can close us out. Great. Thanks, Brooke. Now, as you can see in the... Uh above diagram with uh, our partner, Robin. You know, the Robin platform is an application and infrastructure aware platform for automating the deployment, scaling and lifecycle management of data and network intensive applications on Kubernetes. The Robin platform abstracts the underlying server, network and storage infrastructure so that MNOs and MVNOs using Motivity as an MVNE, a mobile virtual network enabler, can deliver 5G services in a cloud native API driven environment with point and click simplicity. The Robin platform automates the provisioning and day two operations so that MNOs, MVNOs can deliver 5G applications in minutes instead of days. Now, Cogar does the above for industrial applications, you know, with integrations pre built to SAP, Salesforce, and internally developed applications that the enterprise may have with its VSMP, VSDP workflow automation engine and its governance uh, solution and policy engine uh, if needed. To wrap up, uh, if I may, uh, basically this is a journey as I mentioned. And so what we're seeing is a lot of solutions are out there, a lot of siloed platforms are there, but what we're trying to do is connect all the dots. You know, this is a, a tough environment right now uh, with work from home, with remote management, you know, solutions are needed for automation, remote management via dashboards, showing all the process metrics and statuses to be visualized in real time. We need remote control of workflow pipelines via email. We need role-based policy controls. We need to support multiple databases across hybrid multi-clouds, uh, so containerization is a key uh, uh, enablement uh, solution there. And then Colbert's workflow process engine is unique with task-based models, which supports concurrency and multi-tenancy, which is more representative of real world teams as teams are likely distributed and working on concurrent projects. Uh, and then multi-tenancy in the Omnibus as an enterprise service bus is also supported as well. These are challenging times now, but with newer solutions and newer thinking, hopefully this will all be alleviated with better solutions from platform providers like Cover, Robin.io, and the Motivity Alliance, as we discussed. Hopefully the result is better harmony within IT teams, better business outcomes from innovations by Motivity Alliance members. So hopefully this is a game changer. Any last comments, Brooke? No, that's it. Um, but with that being said, I suppose I always have a comment. Again, it's about making it easier to use. And I have to say, one of the things we do with the Alliance is we reduce your time to outcome from integration cross lifecycle management, whether we're talking about the technical aspects, aspects, the operations, or the business side of your solution. Great. Thanks, Brooke. And thank you for everyone attending this call. Uh, this was a, a great session. Thank you.